The American economy is run by countless different things, from freight transportation across the country to high-income jobs in the large metropolitan areas. From a geography standpoint, it's fascinating. Silicon Valley focuses on tech, the Midwest focuses on manufacturing, and Wall Street focuses on finances. It's a simple fact that having at least one major economy can decide your culture and future. So why don't areas just purposefully give themselves an identity from this? Well, this is something that's happened. A neighborhood was created to build the largest tech economy possible, and it resulted in a 7,000-acre neighborhood with an economic value of $25.1 billion per year, with companies like IBM, Pfizer, and more. This is the Research Triangle Park, America's smartest neighborhood. Before I talk about it though, please consider subscribing to the channel. We make geography content like this every week, so if you enjoy learning about the US, I'd really appreciate if you subscribed. Thank you. So let's take a look at the Research Triangle Park. First of all, where in the world is it? If it's so important, your guesses would obviously be California or New York. But no, it's in North Carolina. The exact location is to the northwest of the Raleigh metro, dead in the center of the three cities of Chapel Hill, Durham, and Raleigh, which does end up being very important. The specific location has some other aspects though. Interstate 40 and Interstate 885 have a major interchange in the park, and there are seven exits that provide direct access to the area. Finally, the general density and makeup of the region is largely suburban, with obviously high-end neighborhoods surrounding it, and the Raleigh-Durham International Airport is just to the east. All in all, it's in a pretty perfect location, so let's get into why it's so interesting. So the RTP is the largest and most prominent research park in the U.S., with the second largest being the Cummings Research Park in Huntsville, Alabama. I bet you didn't expect that. The park is home to 7,000 acres of important land. It has 300 total companies across that area, most of which have their own little campus area, anywhere from tiny to massive depending on how large their influence is. In fact, there ends up being more than 22.5 million square feet of buildings within the park. The largest company here would be IBM, which has a massive campus in the north part of the park. Cisco dominates the south half, and honestly they might even have a larger campus, dominating this entire area. There's also the Alexandria Center for Life Science, which is a private road with several labs from universities like Duke or UNC, and other companies in there as well. The Triangle is responsible for several research developments, like AstroTurf, which is used in a ton of sports stadiums. 3D ultrasounds were developed here, Taxol, the most prescribed cancer drug of all time, LED lighting, and I can keep going. Well, actually I can't really because it gets a lot less interesting, unless you care about boring stuff like making kids hear for the first time or HIV drugs. I'm joking, obviously. This isn't just something we see everywhere, this is very specific to the area. The Research Triangle Park is run by the Research Triangle Foundation, which is a private nonprofit organization that's basic idea is to grow the economy in the park and make monetary investments into it. Which brings up the idea of how difficult it is to run something like this. It didn't just spring up randomly, it required insane amount of planning and important upkeep. The neighborhood even has a master plan, which is 68 pages long. The plan details what the RTP wants to be and the current goals. These mostly focus on the current ideas of connectivity, with a big mission being adding density to the area for walkability while maintaining the environmental area. As you've probably seen, the Research Triangle Park was placed in a massive forest, and this was absolutely just a big forest when it was founded. At the start, the idea was purely about automobile transportation and the natural environment in the forest, so trying to add bike and pedestrian infrastructure after the fact is obviously difficult. A lot of the companies have individual trails, like the EPA for example, which has a trail around Discovery Lake. But honestly, the Environmental Protection Agency focusing on that isn't really the biggest surprise ever. So I'm sure you're dying to know why and how the Research Triangle came to be, just like the title says. Well, don't worry, I got you. So first, understanding the proximity of the RTP to its surroundings is important. Raleigh is home to NC State, a large and important university. Durham is home to Duke University, obviously another major college. And finally, Chapel Hill is home to UNC, as we know. These three colleges are so important to the metro, bringing young affluent people into the job market. But it wasn't always this way. Back in the 1950s, the economy was way behind, still focusing on farming, textiles, and other things that didn't really bring in the big bucks. People would go to college at the three universities, then they'd get done and realize, hey, the economy here actually sucks. And then they'd promptly move to Chicago, New York, or another one of the rich cities that would take them. This meant the Triangle wasn't getting like any of the benefits from the universities, so higher-ups from these companies and governments came together and came up with this plan to redefine the metro area. 
They would place a research park directly in the center of the three universities, attracting massive companies and keeping their college educated from prestigious schools, mind you, in the area. And boy, did this work perfectly. The Research Triangle Park was formed in 1956, and companies began moving in. There were obviously early obstacles, like fighting through the image of the South in this current time period, for reasons I don't need to mention. And it wasn't very cheap to buy 7,000 acres and then build roads, but don't worry, they had it covered. And once the parcels were there, people started moving in. Over the next 40 years, it completely redefined this region of the country, going from a declining place of the past to literally being referred to as the Research Triangle. Yep, that's right, these three cities and three universities came together with their large research and turned this into a growing metro that focused on tech, research, and other progressive economies. I bet UNC and Duke fans don't want to hear about them working together, but you guys can't get enough of each other here. There's even a biotechnical center that you guys basically share, it's so cute. So here we are then, but things aren't done at all for the research triangle. The Raleigh-Durham metro area is the 23rd fastest growing in the country, gaining 10.47% in the last five years. And it continues to expand with new interstates and a ton of suburban sprawl. Within the park, the future is bright. Currently, Apple has a new planned campus worth $1 billion to focus on engineering and obviously research. Google is leasing space soon for cloud engineering, and I haven't even gotten to the most important development, which is Park Center. This will be an 100-acre land area that will focus on residential and mixed-use development with green space. And this has the obvious intention of forming a sense of place within the park, with a central space being created. Currently, the headquarters are located there, and a farmer's market as well. Then there's Boxyard RTP, which is a shipping container development with retail, dining, and other amenities. This was a budget project worth $9 million only, and it was able to open in 2021 to start on that idea of good commercial development. But future plans call for $1.5 to $2 billion of investment into office space, residential units, retail, hotels, transit, and obviously parks and green space around the park center. It leans heavily into that idea of adding density that they outlined in their master plan. I think the future is bright for the RTP, as the defining feature of the research triangle and this entire region. The rural south is not in the same situation, and even just areas to the northeast of the city are declining. So that really shows you what one single part of the economy can do for you. It's been an insanely successful economic story, and I think it could be a great example for other cities. Should declining manufacturing cities in the Rust Belt, like Cleveland for example, find more futuristic ideas to lean their economies on? I think there are several good ideas possible, and it just takes the focus of several influential people and groups. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members this week, Nathan Nugget, Dutch Derland Lynn, Big Golden Yoshi Fan, Bunny I, James Cermak, Rob R, Big Pasty, Jameson Headley, Colonel Potter, Eric Harris, Third JC17, Jerome McCall, The Baked Fruit, Andres Quintero, Jesse Cook, Jay Onrigo, The Autistic City Skylines Fan, Richard Law, Alexander Lichko, Laura Halliday, Charles Watson, Aiden Kyles, a Happy Holiday, Grant Dickerson, Midwest Rail Fan, Mick Kastner, D, Stephen Phillips, CJ Brick, Resident Contrarian, Haas of the Wolf, Brock Sanders, Stephen Priestman, SB Wilder, Florida Jake, Alex Williams, Mickey Tafarsanoff, Kurt Ainsley, KMS162, Bryson, Rosebud 4, Darkbird, Wolfling73, Snyder Schwein, Benjamin Whitings, and Ryan Devins. I appreciate you all so much. More City Scallions videos are on the way, so if you want to watch those, become a member at the link down in the description below, or click the join button. Thank you so much.